This program is brought to you by Abiding Above Ministries. Good to see everybody here. Praise God. The believers praise. And these two gentlemen here from Ellendale Baptist Church, look what you've done. You've got people trickled in. And uh, the tent's filling up. And uh, praise God for that. It, to me, it always reminds me, whenever you do a crusade and you do an evangelistic event, it's different than a church service because uh, you have to kind of make some noise and sing uh, to get people to come up and turn aside and look, kind of like the burning bush with Moses. And so as y'all are singing the songs, people just started coming in little by little. It reminds me of squirrels coming down out of, out of their nest in the morning to eat the nuts and I just picture all these people that are under this tent this morning having come out to take of the bread of life. Amen. Well, Jeff Patrick is a good friend of mine. Jeff, we are brothers in God's barn. And what a better picture of God's barn than a big tent like this. I heard about a, an evangelist one time that was preaching under a big tent. It was his first time. And he looked up and he said, my word, you could get a lot of hay in here. And he was a farm boy. But anyway, Jeff, I'm always privileged to come to Memphis Union Mission and to minister with you. And uh, it's always a blessing to be with you. Thank you for encouraging me. You know, we've been serving together a long time now. And uh, you can see it in my hair and I can see it in your hair. <laughs> we've been at it a long time and got a lot further to go, I believe. But uh, good to be here. Memphis Union Mission is a blessing to a whole lot of people. Uh, people come here from all walks of life. I would imagine, I was just thinking about it a moment ago sitting on the front row, I would imagine there are men and women here from all over the United States that somehow find yourself in Tennessee in a place called Memphis. You find yourself here and you wonder, you know, how did I really get here? A little bit by little bit, people just kind of wander in. And then you go through some hard knocks in life. Many of you have gone through some hard knocks. Raise your hand if you've gone through some hard times in life. Just about everybody here has gone through tough times in life. Some of you are from the East Coast. Some of you are from the West Coast. Some of you can, you probably have more stories that you could tell us about your life and what God has done. And uh, you probably could tell us a lot about sin too, couldn't you? What happens is this. You get saved, or you think you get saved, and then you start living life, and then you start facing temptations. All of us have faced temptations. Some of us have faced temptations that other people have not faced. Some of you may have faced temptations to drink alcohol. Some of you may have faced temptations to uh, maybe take some kind of drug, whether it's a legal drug or illegal drug, and you found yourself not only being tempted, but partaking, and you found yourself enjoying it. Going to parties, drinking, maybe taking a few drugs, and you enjoyed it so much that you said, I think I want some more. And you kept doing it, kept listening to music, kept partying, and having all these wonderful things. And then you began to realize, you know, I'm getting addicted to these things in my life. And you began to say, you know, I'm going to quit that. I'm going to stop that. I'm not going to do that anymore. This is not good. But you find that you begin to crave it with inside. And so you go after it again. So, well, I'm just going to do it for a season, and then I'm going to stop, and I'm not going to do it anymore. But that season becomes months and months and months. That season turns into years and years and years. And the next thing you know, you're way down the track in life. You don't understand how, but somehow you find yourself under a tent right next door to a rescue mission called Memphis Union Mission in Memphis, Tennessee. And you say, how did I end up here? And you think, you know, I never envisioned this would be my life. But listen, my friend, know this. You're still alive. You're still moving and breathing, and you're still moving forward. And my friend, God is not finished with you yet. My friend, what you need to do is turn to God, turn away from your sin, and turn to the cross of Jesus Christ, and let His Holy Spirit come inside of you. Because, my friend, I want to tell you, if you're struggling with some kind of addiction, you're going to need the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit to keep you above that addiction. It's just the way it is. Now, I'm not here to condemn you this morning. I'm here to help you. I'm your brother in Christ, and I'll help you to the day you die or to the day I die. I'll always be helping you. But my friend, 
if you want to overcome addictions, if you want to rise back up and move forward and walk the way God would have you to walk, my friend, you can't do it in and of yourself. You don't have the wherewithal within you. You need the power of the Holy Spirit that comes within you at the moment of salvation. And then you need to involve yourself in a local church with brothers and sisters in Christ who will hold you accountable to the way that you live. So when you begin to be tempted again to walk in the ways of the world, your friends come alongside you and say, don't do that. You have the inward Holy Spirit telling you, don't do that. But then you have your friends on the outside saying, don't do that. I'll walk with you. I'll help you. You can get over this. I'm dealing with someone right now that could very well end up in this mission one day. Someone who is an alcoholic. Someone who was raised in a Christian home. Someone who had the best of everything. But she wanted to go party. She wanted to have uh, friends that were walking the wide road that leads to destruction. And what she didn't realize, though she thought she was only going to do this a little while, it became a lifestyle. And now she's almost 50 and she's totally addicted to alcohol and other drugs. And she says, I just can't stop myself. This girl was saved when she was uh, a teenager. She was raised in a, a Christian home. She was raised in church. She's heard the teaching of God's Word. She's been through discipleship. But now she has something within her like a magnet that's pulling in her and pulling in her and pulling in her, encouraging her to go the wrong way. And she's going to need godly friends. She's going to need a lot of prayer. And she's going to need a lot of time to walk through what she's going through. But at the same time, she will admit, I have brought this upon myself because I have sowed the seeds of sin and I have reaped the whirlwind. Her own children have turned against her. She's now in her third divorce. It's no way to live. What seems like fun for a moment will end up causing all kinds of problems. I once talked to a little boy, and I, I offered this little boy a toy. I said, come here. I said, come take this toy. But he was a shy little boy. And so he wouldn't come up to me and take the toy. And so I tried over and over and over again, and I asked him, would you not like this toy? I'm going to give it to you. But he never would come up, and he would never take it from my hand. Listen, salvation is a lot like that. Sometimes people think, not me. Oh, well, I can't do that. Uh, I can't have salvation. And so they never simply reach out and receive the gift that God is extending to them. Now, salvation, of course, you can't take it in your hand. But, my friend, you take salvation in your heart. When you receive the gift that Jesus Christ is given to you, Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died for the purpose of all of your sins and mine. But there has to come a point in your life where you, you so believe it Instead of just looking at it and thinking about it and watching the services that happen here on this property, you reach out and you say, I believe and I receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what has God said about His salvation? Well, Jesus is God's one and only Son. Jesus came to this earth from heaven. At some point, God the Father said to God the Son, Son, I want you to go down to this earth because it's populated with people who are separated from me because of their sin. And so Jesus Christ came to this earth. He was put in the Virgin Mary. He was carried by her for nine months. And then she was, he was delivered. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He was raised. The Bible says that he grew in stature and wisdom like all men do. He was tempted in all points like we are but there's something unique about Jesus being the only begotten son, which means he's unique. He never sinned. He was not born with sin. You and I were born with sin. That's the reason we sin. What's in the well comes up in the bucket. What's in us comes out in our actions, our life, our speech. So Jesus Christ came to earth to have all of this sin that you and I have, everything that you've ever done or will do, placed upon him on the cross where he died out with sin. Now, that is a gift from God to you. 
God, for years, has been extending His gift of salvation to you. But instead of being shy, instead of holding back, instead of listening, instead of just tasting but not swallowing, there has to come a day, my friend, where you say, I will receive the Lord Jesus Christ. I will believe in my heart that God hath raised Him from the dead. And my friend, when you do that, the Bible says you will be saved. So, Jesus is God's one and only Son. But I want to tell you something. Salvation is not a reward for being good. Uh, we all know that, right? How many of you have been good all your life? I haven't. Do you, do you realize that the best person in here, there is no way you could possibly be good enough to be saved? It's impossible. If God made things so that His Son, Jesus, did not die on the cross, and if you would just live a good life, God would save you. Even if He made it that way, nobody would be saved. Why? Because all of us sin. All of us sin. I mean, even the best person in the city of Memphis, they've got sin in their life that only they know, you don't know anything about. So there's no way that a person can be good enough to get into heaven. Not even a preacher is good enough to get into heaven. You follow me around and you'll realize, you know, he hadn't quit sinning yet. Uh, my desire is never to sin again. But the truth is, I sin after salvation. So salvation is not a reward for being good. Now, do you remember on Calvary's cross? Do you remember what happened? Jesus, there he was, 33 years of age. And there he was on the cross where he became your sin and mine. And there was a thief on either side of him. Remember the story about the two thieves? There was a thief on either side of him. And uh, they were crying out against him. In uh, Luke chapter 23, verse 39, it says, Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, talking about Jesus, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. So there Jesus was on the cross, and a thief on this side and a thief on this side also hanging on a cross. One of those thieves were saying, hey, look, if you truly are God, why don't you save yourself and save us along with you? But the other thief was different. Remember that thief? But the other answering, he rebuked the other thief who was blaspheming Jesus. He rebuked him and he said this, do you not even fear God? Seeing you are under the same condemnation. Verse 41 and we indeed justly. What he was saying is, look, we deserve to be on these crosses and we deserve to be dying because we have sinned, we've committed a crime. But this man Jesus, who is God, he's never once sinned. And here he is hanging on the cross and you're blaspheming him. He said, and we indeed justly, or we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Talking about Jesus. So, both of these thieves were bad men. Both deserved to be punished. Listen, all of us, all of us, the Bible says, have sinned and what? Come short of what? The glory of God. That includes me, that includes Jeff Patrick, that includes Believer's Praise, that includes all of you. All of us, in a sense, are like these thieves. We are sinful and we deserve judgment. But God sent Jesus as our substitute. He is the propitiation, that is the satisfaction for our sin. And so one thief rejected Jesus Christ. But the other thief received Jesus Christ. I want to ask you this question. Which one are you? The Bible says that the road that leads to destruction, the road that leads to hell, my friend, is a very wide road and what? Many are what? On that road. Listen, are you marching down a highway to hell? The Bible also says there is a narrow road. And that narrow road, my friend, leads to eternal life. It leads to heaven. Listen, which road are you on? The wide road that leads to destruction or the narrow road that leads to eternal life? Which thief are you, my friend? Are you the thief that does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ even though he was just about to die on that cross, he still did not believe and he did not receive. The gift, my friend, was extended to him, but he did not take. The other thief was different. And maybe you're here today and you say, I'm the other thief. 
My desire is to get off this wide road because I want to tell you, it's giving me nothing but headaches in my life. It's bringing me down. I want on the narrow road. Yes, there may only be a few. Yes, I'm going to have to turn my back on the way I have lived and I'm going to walk godly from now over. That's what I want. Are you here today and you want that? Do you want a better life? Listen, the narrow road can only be obtained through the cross of Jesus Christ. My friend, that other thief, what did that other thief do? That other thief said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now just think about it. This thief knew that within moments or maybe an hour, I'm going to breathe my last breath and I'm going to die. He knew that it was the end for him. And he looked at Jesus Christ, the Son of God, And he realized this man does not need to be up here. I deserve to be up here, but not Jesus. And you know what? He believed in the Son of God, and he received him. You know what Jesus said to him? Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. My friend, I want you to think about this. That thief was nailed to a cross just like Jesus was. That thief that Jesus said, you'll be in paradise with me today. Because his feet were nailed, because his hands were nailed, he could not serve God. He could not come down off the cross and go be a missionary, go be a pastor, go be a soul winner, go hand out tracts, go serve around the church. He couldn't do any of that. He could not even be baptized by water, my friend. He was nailed on a cross. And he died nailed there. But Jesus, the Son of God, said, listen, today you will be with me in paradise. You say, Chris, how did that happen? He went from the wide road that many of you might be on, and he was put on a narrow road. He went from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. He went from Satan's kingdom to God's kingdom. And now he had a home in heaven. And listen, within moments or within hours, he found himself with Jesus Christ in heaven. He made the right choice, my friend. He put his trust in Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the what? Free gift. Notice it's free. Your hands are nailed. Your feet are nailed. You can't do anything for it. All you can do is what? Believe. And as you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, my friend, He comes and sets up residence within you in the power and person of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is what? The gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should what? Boast. You can't do anything for it, my friend. It's impossible. You just simply believe and receive. Now, I'm offering you a gift this morning. It's not a gift that you can take with your hand, but it is a gift that you have to take. It is a gift that you take in your heart. I'm offering that to you. You say, Chris, what am I believing on? This is it. Simple and clear. Listen. Jesus hanging on that cross. All of your sin, all of mine, were placed upon Jesus. I want you to picture that in your mind. Think about it. Jesus Christ cried out, My God, my God, what? Why hast thou what? What was he talking about? The fact that he was right then, my friend, dying for all your sin. You say, Chris, what about the drugs I've taken? He died for it. Chris, what about all the drinking I've done? He died for that. He died for all sin, past, present, and future. My friend, God's grace could not even begin to be displayed if their sin had not entered into the world. And so, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin and mine. You say, Chris, what are you asking me to believe? I'm asking you to believe personally that Jesus died on the cross as your substitute. He died on the cross in your place. And I'm asking you to do more than just think about it, chew on it, and spit it out. I'm asking you to say, I believe and I receive by praying and asking Christ to come into your heart. But this is a problem. The same problem that many people have, just like the girl I told you that I've been trying to help, who's addicted to alcohol and things. This is the problem. So many people say, that's what I want. 
I'm tired of being on this wide road. I want to be on the narrow road. I'm tired of walking with the children of Satan. I want to walk with the children of God to help me in this life to move forward and to be accountable. This is what's happening, though. Listen, I love you, so listen. You're, if you're holding on to anything that you love more than God, you won't believe and you won't receive. Uh, well, let me ask you, what are you holding on to? Uh, are you thinking, I'm going to drink just a little bit more and then I'm going to let it go? But you haven't yet. You say, well, I can quit any time I get ready. Why haven't you quit yet? You say, well, I'm just not ready. I'm going to do it a little bit longer. Listen, it's going to eat you alive until you say, I can't quit. Like this lady told me, I can't quit. Listen, what are you holding on to? Maybe it's some type of a drug. Uh, maybe it's some kind of a, an adulterous lifestyle. Whatever it may be. What are you holding on to? And that one thing is keeping you from receiving Jesus Christ. There was a little boy who got his hand stuck in a vase, a very expensive vase in his home. And he started crying. And then he started screaming. And then his mother and father ran into the living room where he was, and he was saying, I can't get my hand out of this vase. And they, they said, look, just pull it out. If you put it in there, you ought to be able to get it out. He said, but I can't, I can't. And they tried soap and water. They tried everything they could. And finally, though it was an expensive vase, his dad went and got the hammer. And he took that hammer and he broke that vase until it fell off that little boy's hands. And listen to me, what did they see? They saw a little boy with his fist clenched on a nickel. And the reason he couldn't get his hand out of that vase is because his hand was clenched on that nickel. He held on to a nickel with a $500 vase broken now. Listen. What are you holding on to that's keeping you from receiving the most valuable thing that you could ever receive? Salvation in the person of Jesus Christ. You say, I'm just going to drink a little bit longer and then I'm going to stop. I'm going to party just a little bit longer and I'm going to stop. Well, I'm going to do this drug just a little bit longer and then I'm just going to go dry out somewhere and I'm going to start all over again. Listen, you've been thinking that for years, haven't you? And you're still doing the same thing. And I want to tell you, the longer you do it, the harder it gets. See, our hearts are, when we're children, they're like Play-Doh. But when we get to be our age, they can become like leather. You see, sin is something that makes you more and more become hardened over and over. You get to where emotionally you can't even feel. You can't love others. You won't allow other people to love you. Why? It's because you're heart is getting harder and harder and harder because of self-protection, self-preservation, and also the rejection that you feel for so long. Until you get to where you say, look, you preachers can preach all you want. I don't hear God. And that's where many people are. And my friend, that's a sad place to be in. Listen, I love you, so listen. What are you holding on to? Why don't you let go and let God? Let him have all there is of you. Because, my friend, if you don't, one day you'll find yourself like that other thief on the cross. You'll bow your head, you'll breathe your last breath out, and you'll find yourself waking up in a place the Bible calls hell instead of waking up in a place Jesus called paradise. Which one do you want? Do you want the wide road that leads to destruction? Do you want Satan's kingdom and Satan's people? Or listen, do you want the narrow road that leads to eternal life? God's kingdom. And listen, when you believe and you receive this free gift, you now have a power within you called the Holy Spirit, the third member of the Trinity. Listen to me, I promise you, on the authority of God's Word, listen. When He comes into you, my friend, listen, you now have the power to rise up above the addiction and to fly with Jesus. Think about an airplane flying. If you turn the key off, it goes down because the power of gravity is pulling it. 
Many of you feel like there's a gravitational pull on you in your soul, in the inside of your being. You feel something's pulling me like a magnet and I can't stop it and it makes me crave this, crave that. It makes me do this and do that. It's like I'm being pulled along by something other than me. Maybe some of you are even hearing voices in your head. Listen to me, my friend. All that can stop by salvation in Jesus Christ and regeneration by the Holy Spirit. Listen, my friend. Don't put this off. I'm telling you the truth. This is the only way. This is the only answer. Think about an airplane. When it flies through the air, you turn the motor off, it goes down. But if you turn that motor back on, what? It stays above the law of gravity. Listen. When you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit and you're relying on Him, He keeps you above sin and addiction. But when you're relying just on yourself, my friend, you go down every time, don't you? You go back, right? To the same thing over and over. You need God in you to overcome whatever it is you're struggling with. Amen? Everyone bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. You may be here today and you say, Brother Chris, what you've just explained is exactly where I am. I want someone to help me overcome where I find myself today. My friend, I want you to picture one more time in your mind the cross of Jesus Christ. Picture Him on that cross, my friend, with all of your sin placed upon Him. Hear Him crying out, My God, my God, why hast Thou forsaken me? Knowing right then, my friend, He was dying in your place with all your sin as your substitute. And listen, see that death with all your sin, as God's free gift that He is extending to you with a loving heart and a loving hand. But there's something you must do, my friend. Don't be shy. You need to reach out and you need to take that gift. You need to take it today. And you need to believe that I can't get myself to heaven by any kind of good living or good works, but I can by believing that Jesus died in my place on the cross, and I believe that today. My friend, if you believe that in your heart today, and you want to receive this free gift, and you want Christ to come into you to help you live the Christian life, because you can't do that either, He'll do it through you as you abide in Him. My friend, I'm going to lead in a very simple prayer, and right now you can ask Jesus to come into your heart. If you want to pray with me right now, and ask Jesus to come into your heart. Every head still bowed, every eye closed. I just want you to stand wherever you are. You stand if you want to pray with me. Yes, sir. Someone else. Someone else. Stand if you want to pray with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Someone else. Someone else. You stand, my friend, if you want to pray right now and ask Christ to come into your heart. You stand right where you are. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And right now, instead of looking at the gift, you can finally receive it. You stand where you are. If you want to pray right now, someone else, don't put it off. Listen, my friend, release that nickel, pull your hand out of that vase. Don't keep holding on to it. You say, Chris, I know I'm going to fail. I know I'm going to go back. Listen, my friend, you will if you don't receive Christ. He's your only hope. He's your only answer, my friend, for overcoming what you struggle with. So you stand up if you want to pray and ask Christ to come into your heart. You stand up right now, okay? Right now. I want to ask you right now, if you're standing right now, if you're standing, ready to receive Jesus Christ, I want to ask you to just slip out right now and meet me right down here at the front, right now. I'm right here. You come right here and meet with me, and we're going to pray together. That's right. You come right around here. Those of you in the back, you come, you come forward now. Don't sit down. You come forward if God is moving in your heart. You come right up here to the front. God speaking to you. We're going to pray a prayer where you can receive this gift, this gift that God has given you. And this is my prayer for you. This is your way, my friend, of letting go of the nickel, pulling your hand away and out of this world system, the world of the flesh and the devil. This is your way to be free from Satan's kingdom and find yourself in Christ's kingdom. Someone else, you come. It's not too late. Someone else, you come. This is what we're doing now. You're releasing yourself to God. You're believing in the cross of Jesus Christ. 
And instead of just looking at the gift and being shy, you're saying, I believe it and I'm going to take it. The Bible says if we'll confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And that's what you're doing right now. I want you to pray with me if God's leading you. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need a Savior. I put all my trust in this fact alone. Jesus Christ died for me personally. I believe that with all of my heart. I ask you now to come into my heart and save me. Thank you now for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You've been listening to Abiding Above Ministries with Chris Hodges. If you would like Chris to speak at your church or event, please go to our website, abidingabove.org. God bless you and make you a blessing.